Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about Keir Trump's current law and um, known as the KCL. So in our previous video, we have discussed KBL, but for this video, we're going to discuss KCL. So what is KCL? Actually, KCL states that the algebraic sum of the currents entering any node is zero. Okay, so the sum of the currents entering a node is equal to zero. Or in other words, the current entering a node okay, is equal to the current leaving that the same node. So for example, in this uh, circuit, okay, we have a node, again, let's label this as A. This is our node, okay, where a node is actually a place or a point where uh, uh, two or more electrical components are uh, connected. So for example, we have a circuit and it has a node A here. As you can see, we have current I sub 1 entering the node. We have another current coming from this branch of the voltage source I sub 4 coming inside of the node. And we have a current okay, away from the node I sub 3 and we have a current or current produced by the current source uh, entering in this, into this node. It says that the summation of all the currents in a node should be equal to 0 or the current Okay, the current entering, I entering, should be equal to the I leaving. Okay, we can imagine this node as a tube, okay, water tube. For example, you have a tube like this, okay, that this is an example of a node, analogy, great analogy. If you are going to pump in water on this side of the node, then of course, let's say you pump in water, 3 gallons of water into this uh, pipe. So what will happen, some of the water will go here and some of the water will go here. Now, it says that uh, we have three gallons of input, then definitely we should have two gallons here or one gallon here or vice versa. Okay, as long as their sum is equal to three gallons. So this is an example of what you, end, what you input okay, is equal to the output. So the current, the, the water entering this pipe, should be equal to the water leaving the two pipes, okay? So the same as for our node, the current entering must be equal to the current leaving or if we are going to get the summation of this, it should be equal to zero, okay? So we have some uh, conventions in writing KCL equations wherein uh, the current entering in a node, okay? As we see here, I1, I4, and I2 sub are entering to the node then they should have a positive sign. When the current is leaving the node, in the direction leaving the node, it should have a negative sign. So, what will happen if we write the KCL okay, at node A of this equation? For example, for this uh, problem, how do we write the KCL? Okay. So, since this I1, as you can see, this current I sub 1 is entering the node, so it should have a positive sign, okay? It should have a positive sign. And then, of course, as we can see, we have another current, okay, due to the current source I sub 2 entering the node. So again, we would add that to our equation. Since it's entering the node, it's positive. It must be positive, okay? And another one we have, uh, let's say, I sub 3. I sub 3 is leaving the node. And if we have a current leaving, that should be a minus I sub 3. Okay? And last but not the least, we have the current here in our branch in the voltage source is entering the node. That's I sub 4. So that should be plus I sub 4. And that is equal to 0. Okay? That is equal to 0. So uh, if we are going to manipulate that, so we have I sub 1 plus I sub 2 transposing I sub 3 on the left side of our equation, or I'm sorry, on the right side of our equation, plus I sub 4, we have this formula. So, as you can see, if we are going to analyze this, all of the currents entering the node I sub 1, I sub 2, and we have I sub 4 should be equal to the current leaving the node, which is I sub 3, which makes sense. Because all of these currents are actually, would combined up, okay, and this I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 4 would be, would be added in this node and would further go here, which is equal to I sub 3. So the current entering the node 
is equal to the current leaving the node. Okay? No current is actually lost because of the conservation of charge. Okay? So um, a no current, a no charge is lost and uh, no current is lost. Okay? So let's try to have an example. So for this given figure, we have to calculate the current I in the given figure using KCL. So how do we do that? So take note that this is our node A. Okay? It interconnects okay, elements, circuit elements. So by using KCL at node A, we write the equation. Okay? Using still our convention, the current entering is positive, the current leaving is negative. Okay? So what are we going to do here? Is that okay? We analyze first. We have an incoming current in our node, so that's five amperes. That's positive five amperes, and we have a current I, which is the unknown. It's coming into the node, entering to the node, so that's plus still, and this is a current leaving the node, so this must be negative two amperes because it's leaving the node, and this is leaving the node, so we have minus of the negative 3 amperes okay, is equals to 0. So it's minus because it's leaving the node. It's negative because the given is negative 3 amperes. So upon uh, solving the I, we have this minus would be distributed. This would become uh, 3 amperes. So this is 2 amperes plus 3 amperes. I'm so sorry. Let's rewrite this. So we have minus 2 amperes plus 3 amperes is equals to 0. So, solving for I, that is actually if, uh, 5 minus 2 is 3. So, 3 plus 3 is actually 6 amperes plus I. Okay, so 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 3, 6 amperes plus I is equal to 0. And I is actually negative 6 amperes. So, don't be scared if you get an I or current that is negative. Okay? It only means that this assumption of the direction of the current I coming towards the node is wrong, but rather in this direction. Okay? In this direction. It should be in this direction. Okay? But uh, that is the only meaning of negatives, negative in a, in a current. Okay? Don't be afraid to get a negative current. It means that it is reversed in this direction. Okay? It so happened that the problem arbitrarily selected the current in this direction, so the current I in this direction is negative 6 amperes. Okay? So the negative only uh, says that it is in the opposite direction. Okay? So how about for this problem? In this problem, we're going to, to use both the KCL and the KBL. And I, and I, I advise you to first watch my video about KBL and then uh, uh, before proceeding with this problem. Okay. For example, calculate the current I sub X. Here is our I sub X. Okay. Here is our I sub X, the current in I sub X, and the voltage of V sub X. Here is our V sub X. Okay. So in the given figure below. So how do we do that? Okay. We have four nodes here. So we have node A, okay, denoted by this one. We have node B by this one. We have node C, and we have the node D. So, how do we find I sub X? Okay. Obviously, if we're going to have a KCL at node D here, we don't know the value of I3. And we, don't, and we know the value of this, but we don't know the value of I3. So, we have two unknowns. Our aim is to find I sub X. So, we cannot directly have a Kirchhoff's current law in this node because we don't know I3. We know this current is 1 ampere. Okay, but we don't know this and this, so we have to unknown. So we cannot definitely have Kirchhoff's current law uh, uh, again in this node. Okay, so we have in, in node A, okay, we can have a Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, we need to find first the current, okay, in this direction. As we can see, we have I sub 1 here, okay. And our I sub 1 is in this direction. Let me just rewrite. We have an I sub 1 here coming into this node. And we have a 1 ampere into this node. And we have uh, out of this node, okay, leaving this node 4 amperes. So we can definitely solve for I1. 
if we have KCL, okay, KCL at node A, so what will we do? The same convention applies. So current entering, we have 1 ampere. So that's positive 1 ampere, okay? All of the nodes, all of the currents entering and leaving this node should be considered. Uh, should be considered. So we have leaving the node, that's minus 4 amperes because 4 amperes is leaving this node A. And we have another one entering. This is this I1 is the same as this. I just rewrite it so you can see. So we have uh, it's entering the node. So it, this should be positive I sub 1 is equals to 0. So we have 1 minus 1 ampere minus 4 amperes plus I sub 1 is equal to 0. And that is equivalent to negative 3 amperes plus I sub 1 is equal to 0. And our I sub 1 is 3 amperes. Okay? So that is our I sub 1. I sub 1 is 3 amperes. Okay? So, what's next? Why do we need to get that? We need to get that in order for us to know what the value of I3. And if we get the I3, we can have finally a Kirchhoff's current law at node D. Okay? So, how about at node B? We must do a KCL again at node B. So, we have KCL at node B. Okay, if we are going to uh, have a Kirchhoff's current law, in node B, we have to consider current I1, which is we have already solved, 3 amperes. We have I2 and we have current entering this node, 2 amperes. So to write the currents, let's start with I1, I sub 1, which is the same I sub 1 here, is leaving the node, so it must be negative 3 amperes. It's leaving the node. Okay? And we have another I sub 2, it's leaving the node, so it must be minus I sub 2. And we have current entering the node should be plus 2 amperes is equals to 0. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 amperes minus I sub 2 is equals to 0. So, what will happen? I sub 2 should be equal to negative 1 amperes. Negative 1 ampere. Okay? So, we can finally get the value of I sub 3 if we are going to have a KCL here at node C. So, as you can see, KCL at node C, what will happen here is that if we have a KCL there, so we have I2 entering this node we have i3 entering this node and we have three amperes leaving the node so i2 we have already solved and that is negative one ampere so that's positive because it enters the node positive of the negative one ampere i okay, don't be confused the negative one ampere is the i sub 2 we have solved and the positive sign here it's because it's entering the node c okay plus we have I sub 3 because it's entering the node. This one is entering the node. Minus 3 amperes because this 3 amperes is leaving that node. This equals to 0. So we have negative 1 amperes minus 3 amperes plus I sub 3 is equal to 0. That should be negative 4 amperes plus I sub 3 is equal to 0. Then therefore I sub 3 is equal to 4 amperes. Yeah, we have already get the I sub 3 here. And our very purpose is to get I sub X, okay? So we have the I sub 3 here as 4 amperes. So if we have a KCL at node D, we know the I3, we know the 1 ampere, we can therefore get the I sub X. So if we KCL or have Kirchhoff's current law at node D finally, so what will happen here is we have I3 leaving the current or the node D here. So it must be negative. So negative 4 amperes. Because uh, we have calculated the 4 ampere, it's leaving. So it's negative 4 amperes in the node D. And this one also is leaving. This current, 1 ampere, this is a current source. It's leaving the D. So we have 1 minus, uh, we have uh, minus 1 ampere because it's leaving the D. And of course, we have I sub, uh, I sub X, which is also leaving the node. So we have I sub X equals to 0. So in order first to get I sub X, so it's very simple, I sub X, we transpose this on the right side, so we have negative 5 amperes. So our, our I sub X is negative 5 amperes, okay? So we have already calculated I sub X, and how about V sub X? The V sub X is this, okay? That's the V sub X. 
Okay, so how do we get this v sub x here, right here, this v sub x, this v sub x? Of course, since this is a closed loop, we can apply KVL, okay? We can apply KVL and we can label it at loop 1. So we have KVL at loop 1, okay? If we have a KVL here, let's write. So we have the current will start flowing here, all right? So we have we have negative v sub x, all right, because it enters to the negative terminal of this assigned sign for v sub x, and then it enters again to negative terminal of this 10 volts. So we have negative 10 volts, okay, and then it continues here. Then we have plus okay v sub 2 here, and again we don't have any elements here, we don't have any resistors here, so there is no voltage drop here. So, in this should be equal to 0. Okay? So, we can solve V sub X. But, first, V sub 2 by ohms law is equal to the current flowing in, in the 5 ohms multiplied by the current I sub 2. So, by ohms law, that's by ohms law. V is equal to IR. Because we are only concerned with what is Vx. So, V sub 2, therefore, is I sub 2, the current through the resistor, 5 ohms, multiplied by the resistance itself, okay, VIR, that is still a voltage. So, I sub 2, we have computed, we have negative 1 ampere, okay, multiplied by 5 ohms, and that is negative 5 volts, okay. So, if we substitute V sub 2, in our equation here, we have negative V sub X minus 10 volts minus 5 volts is equal to 0. So, again, if we transpose this on the right side, we have negative 10 volts minus 5 volts is equals to Vx, or this is negative 15 volts is equals to Vx. So, our V sub x is negative 15 volts, and our I sub x is negative 5 ohms. And this is a very basic example of KCL and KVL applied in a circuit. So, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much again for this wonderful discussion of KCL and KVL. See you again on the next video. Thank you so much and God bless.